Hi everyone, Massimo here from the Blue Root team. And today I want to show you something that's kind of a, you would think it's easy, but we get a lot of questions about it and it can honestly stump a lot of people and that is importing. In today's video, what I'm gonna show you is how to import contacts and accounts, which are two very common modules. And if you use lead, it's kind of the same style, but I'm gonna go over a number of things. Number one, how to kind of prep your Excel file. This isn't gonna be an Excel tutorial, but I'll kind of talk about some do's and don'ts. How to import the data uh, into one of the modules, i.e. contact or lead. And then also kind of a nice little tidbit and also very important if you're doing two tables is how to join them. So for example, how to say Massimo works for Blue Room. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. We love hearing from you. And this was actually, uh, this video was actually really generated by user feedback. So we love hearing from you. I'll also invite you to join our inner circle. It's something we're really proud of. We just launched it this month. And essentially what it is, is it's a place to learn all of our best practices over the years, be introduced to all the partners we know, get it, get discounts on our extensions that we've built. It's just generally a place that you can learn more about Zoho, get a massive head start in your Zoho journey, and we help you get there. So check that out. There's a link below, very affordable, and we'd love to have you part of the inner circle. Enjoy the video. Alrighty, so let's get into it. So there's a few assumptions I'm gonna make in this video or, or guidance I'll give. And number one is if you're importing into Zoho, you cannot import a PDF or a Word doc or a photo. You're gonna have to work with Excel formats or table formats. So .csv or .xls, which are both available to be opened by Excel, is what you're gonna to need to import with. And the way Zoho works is they want your Excel file your CSV set up like this. So along the top are your columns. Those columns relate to fields in the CRM. So for example, first name, we're gonna make that the first name in the CRM. And so don't flip it. Don't put like first name in the rows and then their name, that's not gonna work. How Zoho wants it is like this. And again, it has to be in .csv or .xls. There are some little watchouts, like for example, if you're in .xls, you can only do 5,000 records at a time. I would always recommend doing .csv. If you have an XLS, you can convert it just by hitting save as in your Excel and convert it to a CSV. It's a lot better on the data or the size of the data and Zoho allows you to import many more records in one go. So. That's my recommendation. It does kill your colors and your bolding and all of that stuff, but for an import, you don't really need that. Make sure you have all your columns. What I have here is a pretty easy Excel file. You may have one more complicated or more dirty or whatever the word may be. Just keep in mind that anything you wanna import into the CRM, you need a unique identifier if you ever wanna update that import. Let's say, for example, you import 500 people and you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I really wanna put their title in now. Well, the only way you're gonna be able to do that is some unique identifier. So if you're importing from an external database, which probably won't be happening in this video, but if you are, you'll probably have an ID. And I'll show you how to work with that in a minute. For the majority of you that won't have an ID, let's say you're coming from Outlook or something, make sure you have email or phone number. And I'll show you how to make it mandatory or at least unique in a minute, but make sure you have that. Like first name and last name, you can have two Matt Smiths, right? But very rarely do you have two Matt Smiths at google.com. Like that's very, very rare and, and might almost be impossible in some cases. So short story is make sure you have any unique field. If you don't, or you can't get one, then just be prepared that you're not gonna update that data. It's a one shot type thing, right? So now you set up your Excel file, first name, last name, email, whatever you have. Put them in columns, put all the data you have. I would recommend cleaning as best you can in Excel before Zoho. You can do it once it's in there, but this is much faster. So now let's go to our CRM. So here's a dummy CRM that I have. I'm gonna to go to the account table first. So in this example, I'm gonna bring in accounts just to show you how that works and how you can link them up into contacts. Let me do this. How to import into any of these tables is the exact same way. Whether you're importing deals, leads, contacts, tasks, whatever. You're gonna to go to the blue button to create a new record and then hit the drop down, and it'll say import accounts or contacts or leads, right? So you're gonna click on that. This is the first page you'll see. A couple things to note here. Number one, you can download a sample file. This is really neat if you've already built out the database and you have first name, last name, email, etc. Zoho will spit out 
that data with the column headers and then you can take your data and use that as a template put the first name in the first name and the last name in the last name this may be helpful for you if you've already built out your crm otherwise hit browse find your doc so it's just going to open up your your finder on windows or mac or whatever you don't really have to worry about this and hit next now this is an important page so on this page it's now going to ask you what you want to do do you want to add new accounts do you want to update existing accounts or do you want to do both? And so this is a question posed back to you. But if you think of your use case, at least typically what I see is people either want to add or do both. The update is valuable, but that's usually on your second import. So if we're assuming the first, let's say I'll walk you through the add one. You may say, well, my Excel file isn't that clean. So I probably have five Walmarts in there. So I want you to add new accounts, but then skip based on, and it says, what do you want to skip on, on the name? So now what it, when it sees the second Walmart and the third Walmart and the fourth Walmart, it'll skip them. So that might be interesting to you, right? Update is similar, but instead of skipping, it'll update it. And you can tell it the same thing. Okay, so a use case here would be, you already brought in your data, Walmarts and all the accounts. Now you're like, oh shoot, I want to add in their postal code or their zip code. Well, now you can import the Excel file again and tell it to update. So go find Walmart and then update the zip code. Now, so this is common for the second, third, whatever import, right? Keep in mind this. So what this is saying is, for example, if Walmart, the account, now has an empty value, say street name is blank, and then you bring in your Excel file and you want to overwrite that, you can tell it not to, right? So you could say, don't update empty values. So if it's empty, don't update it. Typically people have this. So if there's street name in the Excel file and not street name in, in the CRM, it'll update. And then both is very similar. Now this one, if it finds Walmart, it'll update it. If it doesn't find Walmart, it'll add it. So for this example, I'm gonna hit both and then hit next. And so now I'm gonna choose the account. So what you see here is all the fields in the file and then all the fields in the CRM. So on the left is the file, the right is the CRM. So this is just a mapping exercise. Now, if you're having to do many of these imports, like if you're having to do a bunch of these, for example, you're importing accounts every week or whatever, once you set up this field mapping, if you use the exact same Excel file, it will remember it or Zoho will remember it. But for this example, I'm gonna unmap this. And so now I'm gonna say, okay, company in my Excel file is the account name in Zoho. And phone in my Excel file is the phone in Zoho. From my Excel file, that's all I'm going to map. In yours, you might have street and city, etc. So there are some things you can do here. Number one, you can click mapped, unmapped. So this will show you everything that's mapped, everything that's unmapped. And so it's just a nice organization. You can also click here and hit create new fields. So if you forgot, or if this is a new CRM and you want to create fields on the fly, you can hit create new fields. It'll bring up this wizard and it'll show all the fields that you haven't mapped yet. And so now you could say, yeah, you know what? I do want to make a last name field inside of the account and I want it to be a text field. So for example, if there's dates or pick lists or whatever, you can quickly, while you're importing, create fields, which is a really, really cool feature. And then lastly, that's relevant for this import. And, and just to be clear, this is consistent between all modules, leads, contacts, et cetera, is assigned default value. So you may be importing a bunch of accounts and you may say, well, all the accounts I'm importing the status is the status is junk or the status is prospect or something. So instead of making a column in the Excel file called status and making everyone junk, you can come in here and say, okay, well, the status is suspect as an example. So now every account that comes in, it's going to bring in these fields, account name and phone, and it's going to assign them all an account status as suspect. And you can add many more default values, right? Once you've done that, I'd recommend looking over this, check map, check unmapped, hit next. So it just warns you that a few fields are unmapped, right? So we wanted them unmapped, so that's fine. And then last piece before you hit go is you can do a few things. So number one, you can assign owner based on assignment rules. I'm not going to go through this today. This isn't very common. If people need this, please write in the comments. I'll make a, a little separate video on this. It's more advanced. This one is getting more and more common. So if you do have workflows or automations in the CRM, for example, whenever you add a new account, you want an email to go out. Well, you can tell this to trigger it. And what will happen is when it does this import, it will trigger that workflow and send out the emails. You may say, no, no, I'm just bringing in these accounts. I don't want any automations to happen and you can keep it unchecked. Lastly, 
you can add some follow-up action. So if you're importing this on behalf of someone or for the company or whatever, and you say, okay, I'm gonna import these 100 accounts and now I want the sales guy to be able to, or to get a task to call these accounts, you can do that here, right? So you can actually create a workflow task that will do that. And I hit finish. And now what'll happen is it says it's been scheduled. So it's bringing in this data and you can find that in a couple spots. If you hit the settings icon here and then import and then import history, you'll see here are all the accounts, right? And so you could see here that it skipped a bunch of records. So what I'm clicking on here is 355 accounts came in, 645 were skipped. So this kind of shows you a, a record. You can do a few things. One, you can undo the import. If you say, oh no, this went bad, undo it, it'll pull all that data out. Or you can actually click on these and it'll show you what was added and what was skipped. So you can see in the skipped here, the company was duplicated. So basically what in the import we told it is to skip the records if there's another record with the same name. So th what this is saying is there was at least more than one Twimbo account. You can see two right here, right? So that's what will happen if you turn on those skips. Now, it may have skipped records and you weren't expecting that. All right, and so you can download the list of the errors, clean it up in Excel and then bring it back in. So when you hit download here, it's actually gonna give you a CSV file of what was skipped and then you can re-import that. So that's really handy. So that's basically the general gist of importing data into the CRM, but there is one last little thing I'm gonna show you, which is connecting two tables. So what we did is we just brought in the accounts. Now what I'm gonna do is bring in the contacts or the people who work there and you want to attach them. And so how you're gonna do that is I'm gonna go into the contact module. I'm gonna do the same thing, import. I'm gonna bring in the same file. That's totally fine, right? In that file, if you remember, we had first name, last name, email, phone, and then company. So majority of it was for Massimo, the person, and then the company was the one piece that wasn't. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say both, and I'm gonna say skip by email. Like I said, have something unique. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, yeah, first name, Yep, last name, email, and then company. This is the cool part. So you can go to account name and then choose account name. So what this is doing, what you're seeing here is this is another whole table. So let, let me just account name, just to give you full context here. I'm going to go into a contact here. I'm going to create one. So you can see here, there's a field called account name. So that's what it's showing here. Account name. It's a lookup to another table and it's saying, how do you want to join it? Do you want to join it by the ID or the name? Well, I'll just say name. So now what you're telling the system to do is to grab the company field from the Excel file, go into this field in the CRM. And basically what it's going to do in the background is it's going to do this and it's going to go find that company and link it, right? So now we're going to hit, yep, next. And then I'll hit finish. And now you'll see for example, one of these accounts here. So if I open up Photobug, right now it has no contacts. It should have at least one contact soon, right? As this stuff comes in. And so you can see here, once again, go to the import history. You can see a thousand contacts came in. So if I refresh my page here, you'll see there will be one on the contact. Now, if I go to Dimitri, you'll see here Photobug. So that's how you link those tables. And so again, this goes for contacts linking to accounts, tasks linking to contacts, deals linking to accounts. Like this lookup feature I just showed you goes throughout the CRM. So as always, I appreciate you joining. Please leave comments below. This was a bit, this was a pretty big video and, and there may be some more advanced things you want me to show. So I'm very interested in that. And as I said in the intro, check out our inner circle. It, it's thriving right now. There's a bunch of people joining and it's a great place to learn and get a massive head start on your Zoho journey. See you in the next one.